everyone and welcome to my presentation on understanding CD4 T cell regulation of interleukin-12 in acute Toxoplasma gondii infection. So first I'm going to be discussing the epidemiology and life cycle of Toxoplasma. I will then go over innate versus adaptive immune responses and then discuss the role of two specific cytokines, IL-12 and interferon gamma. I will then discuss my methods and data and then go over my discussion in future testing. So to start out, we'll take a quick look at the epidemiology of Toxoplasma gondii. It is a zoonotic protozoa, meaning it infects both people and animals. It is also an obligate intracellular parasite, so it exists within cells. And it is of particular concern to pregnant women and immunocompromised people. Um, in the case of pregnant women, fetuses can um, develop neurological and ocular disease. And in the case of immune compromised people, toxoplasmic encephalitis can occur um, and it can result in systemic diseases um, due to the suppression of the immune system, which can ultimately be lethal. Currently, there is no current therapy um, to treat toxoplasmosis. And the purpose of our research is to better understand the mechanisms of our immune system response in the acute stage of toxoplasma infection so that in the future, um, therapies can be you know, researched. So in covering the epidemiology, you can see that Toxoplasma gondii infection is widespread. It is estimated that one third of the world's population is infected with this parasite for life. Um, when we look at the life cycle of Toxoplasma gondii, we can see that the definitive host is the domesticated feline. They shed um, oocysts in their feces, which can contaminate water sources as well as vegetable matter. And when animals ingest contaminated sources of water and vegetable matter, um, they develop um, tissue cysts in their muscles. And these cysts are full of the parasite. And when we ingest undercooked meat, um, the parasite can then be spread to us. And it is important to note that tachyocytes proliferate. Um, and tachyocytes are um, one of the life stages of this parasite. But the specific life stage proliferates during the acute stage of infection. So now we'll go over the innate versus adaptive immune responses. Um, as you can see, innate immunity acts first. Um, it then transitions into adaptive immunity. And this is based on our current understanding of the immune response. Um, innate cells take up antigen and pathogens via pattern recognition receptors, and they then present these um, antigens and pathogens to T cells, um, and this helps activate the T cell and helps the T cell recognize that pathogen so that it can then um, assist in clearing that pathogen. However, um, simply presenting the antigen or pathogen is not the only um, thing necessary for T cells to become fully activated. Additional messages are also required, um, and some of these messages are presented through cytokines. So that's why we are specifically looking at interleukin-12 and interferon gamma. IL-12 is a cytokine that is produced by macrophages, neutrophils, and dendritic cells. Um, it then stimulates both NK cells as well as CD4 T cells to secrete the cytokine interferon gamma. And the reason that we're interested in the production of interferon gamma is because it has been shown um, in previous research that it is the most important controller of Toxoplasma gondii. So this is just a visual representation of the role of IL-12 in interferon gamma. And as you can see, we've got dendritic cells, neutrophils, and macrophages, which are all involved in the innate immune response producing IL-12 to stimulate the NK cells as well as CD4 T cells, which are um, kind of bridging the gap between innate and adaptive immune responses. And uh, these cells are producing interferon gamma, which once again is the most important controller for Toxoplasma gondii infection. So this is my research question. Um, Preliminary data from our lab has demonstrated that CD4 T cells are required for NK cell um, interferon gamma production in Toxoplasma gondii infections. We know that IL-12 is required to activate NK cells to produce interferon gamma, so we wanted to know if CD4 T cells might also be involved in regulating the um, NK cell interferon gamma production. So this is my question. Are CD4 T cells required for IL-12 production in acute toxoplasma infections? 
And my hypothesis states that in acute toxoplasma infections, um, if CD4 T cells are present, IL-12 will be produced and NK cells will be stimulated to produce interferon gamma. However, if we remove CD4 T cells from our model, we are um, believe that IL-12 production will be reduced, which will therefore reduce the interferon gamma production uh, by NK cells. So in my methods, I had four groups. I had a naive group of, of mice. I had a CD4 knockout group that was not infected. I also had a wild type infected group, which was infected with the ME49 strain of Toxoplasma gondii. I also had a CD4 knockout infected group, which was infected with the ME49 strain as well. Five days post-infection, I harvested the serum and measured IL-12 using an ELISA assay. Um, it's also important to note that I used both male and female mice um, to test sex as a variable. This is a question that my lab is interested in. Um, so I measured that as well. So as you can see here in my serum sample, I measured um, the naive male groups, the CD4 knockout male groups, as well as wild type infected and CD4 knockout infected. I repeated this for the females as well. And as you can see, the IL-12 production in both the naive and CD4 knockout um, non-infected groups is relatively low um, in both male and female. And then in the wild type infected male, there is a slight increase of IL-12 production. However, when we look at the CD4 knockout infected mice, this production is significantly increased. And that trend is very similar in the female mice. Um, so these results were not um, what I had expected, so I decided to repeat this experiment using um, the same sample sets to see whether or not there may have been an issue um, with the ELISA. And so as you can see in my second set of data, there is a very similar trend. And so um, based on this, I found that NK cells, while they are required, um, while they do require interleukin-12 in order to produce interferon gamma, on a systemic level, the absence of the CD4 T cells actually increased the production of IL-12, and I did not observe any differences between male and female mice. So in the future, um, my goal is to look more closely at the site of infection rather than the um, systemic infection by sampling um, peritoneal exudate, which is called PEC, and spleen. In addition to this, um, we are also interested in adoptive transfer between CD4 T cells from um, naive mice and transferring those CD4 T cells into a CD4 knockout mouse. Um, here are some of my sources. And I just wanted to say thank you to the Giggly Lab for taking the time to um, teach me and coach me. Um, it's been a really incredible opportunity and I'm excited to see um, where my research goes in the future. Thank you.